All right, in a previous video, we showed you how to flash over your R9 units to Express LRS. By the way, that includes the ACC ST or the Access version. So if you did get an Access module, but you have an ACC ST radio and it's not working, you can just flash it over to Express LRS. You don't have to go ahead and get rid of the module or buy a new radio. In this video, we're gonna finish it off by flashing over your receivers to Express LRS so it can communicate with the new firmware on your module. We're gonna do this using the new bootloader overlay method so you can push Express LRS to the receiver just by hooking up to your Betaflight flight controller and then any further updates, you don't have to unwire this anymore. You can just plug your flight controller into your computer, push the firmware right through the flight controller right to the receiver for updates. As before, we're gonna to go to the Express LRS GitHub site, and I'll drop the link below in the video description. And we're gonna to go to the wiki page. From here, we're gonna click on flashing Express LRS. And then right here is the first method we're gonna use is flashing using the TX. So this is a pretty short little guide here. It shows you what we need to do, and we're basically gonna step right through this. So the first thing we need to do here is download this R9MM ELRS BL for bootloader FRK. And this is kind of similar to how when we flashed over the transmitter here, we put a bootloader overlay on top of the bootloader that FRSky has on here. So if you ever did want to flash this back to FRSky firmware, the conventional R9 stuff, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Ah, Patreon sign up on the phone. That's the kind of buzz I like to see. But anyways, what we're going to do now is do the same thing with this. We're going to do a bootloader flash over. So we're going to still have the bootloader on our receivers. So if you ever do want to flash them back to the R9 firmware, you can do that again. So now Express LRS has it both ways where you can actually flash over to Express LRS with the equipment. And then if you do it with the methods I've shown, you can then flash back as well. And as shown here, what we're going to do is going to click on this file here to download it. So we'll click on it. And then we're just going to go ahead hit download here. We're going to save that right to my downloads folder. And then as always, as a reminder here, you hold in the two trim switches and then press the power button at the same time. That will actually put you into the bootloader menu for your transmitter. And then you can go ahead and hook it up to USB and then you'll be able to see the cards right on there. I'm going to actually be able to directly access the SD card just by doing this method. You could obviously take the SD card out as well, plug in your computer and do all that kind of stuff, but I find this a little bit more convenient. Okay, I'm gonna go into my downloads folder. You can see I have the file right here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually cut that and go in, and this is my SD card content. And I'm gonna go into firmware and just paste that into here. Okay, after that, I'm gonna of course disconnect. And then on the radio, I'm gonna go down to where it says exit and click that as well. Now the first thing we need to do is wire up the receiver to our transmitter here using the S port pad. And this is the exact same thing you always had to do with R9 units to update the receivers. You had to wire them up and plug them into your transmitter. So we do have to do this the first time to get the bootloader overlay. But again, once and done, once you do this to a specific receiver, then it's just wired directly to your flight controller. And from there you can use the pass through method. So you can see on the diagram right here, we have to do power, ground, and then signal. And I have that done right here with, you know, just having that wired up and ready to go. And then I have a little dongle here that I'm gonna use to plug that into my transmitter there, little servo connector. So you can see I have the dongle uh, just wired up and I have it, you know, power, ground, and then the smart port. And I have a little servo connector there that I can plug in. The Smart port wire is always over to the right hand side for a QX7. So you can see it's the black, then the red, then the data wire on the right hand side there. Go ahead and push that in, make it nice and secure. Then we're going to pop into our settings. We're going to hold down the menu button in the middle, and then we're going to page over using the page button to get to the files on the SD card. Click on firmware. Go down to that FRK file that we copied on to the SD card. You can see it right there. Click on it once. And then at the very top it says flash S port. So it's the same exact procedure that you use when you were just making updates to your R9M modules with FRSky. Same thing. 
It's just every time there was an update, you had to do this. Now, this is the only time you will have to do this forever. And from now on, you just be able to plug right into your flight controller. So we'll go ahead and do the writing. Then you can see it says flash successful. Just hit OK. And again, that is the last time you'll ever have to do it. If you have multiple receivers, I would recommend just doing them all at once right here. And then once you get them wired back up to the quads, you're never going to have to do this again. As long as you're staying on Express LRS, of course, you would just do it right through the flight controller from this point forward. So that's the next step is actually connecting it back up to my flight controller so that I can flash the actual firmware on. Because what we just did now is we did the overlay bootloader, which is like the core base code of the program. But now we're actually going to put the Express LRS firmware on it. So it will talk with our module, which again has Express LRS on it as well. Okay, you can see it's the next day, different shirt on. But the next step in this process is we need to now hook up our receiver to our flight controller. And as you can see here, there's two pins and those are these pins right here that you'll see just a side of where the antenna gets hooked up. These are the two UARTs that we're gonna connect from the receiver down to our flight controller. So this is a TX UART. So this is A9 TX1 UART. That's gonna go to an RX. So any RX UART needs to be the same one. So if you're gonna choose RX4 in this example, you'd have to choose TX and RX4. You could do two, one, six, whichever, it doesn't really matter. And then A10 RX1, that's gonna go to a TX. So you can see here that's wired to TX4 in this case. So of course, seeing what I have going on here, I have those two UARTs wired up and I'm bringing that feed over and then connecting it right here to my UART. And for me, I'm gonna use UART2, so it's TX and RX. So again, taking the TX from here, going to an RX, taking the RX from here, going to the TX pin on here, following the image we just showed. The other two things obviously we need to hook up here are power. So I'm gonna take the ground and power. So we need to have a five volt feed to that coming over to here. Of course, whichever UART you choose, you wanna get that set up by selecting serial RX on that UART. And also on the configuration tab, you wanna make sure to have CRSF selected as your protocol. Now the next step is we're gonna have VS code loaded and that's we're gonna use that to actually flash through the flight controller into the receiver. In the last video, I showed how to download VS Code, how to clone the Express LRS project to your desktop for now until they start to release these binaries well, in a boot bind mode. But until then, you do have to compile the stuff yourself. I'll link to that video in a card and then also down in the video description as well. So now that we have VS Code opened up here and our project opened up, again, showed that in the last video, so check that out if you're stumbling on that part. But we want to go up to this. I have the project already opened. I'm gonna go ahead and click on platform IO. And then this time we were looking for this pass through right here. So we're gonna hit the expand button on this. Just give it a second and it will load. And then we need to of course have our flight controller plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my flight controller. You wanna make sure to have base flight configurator turned off for this. Don't have it on at all because sometimes it will auto connect if you have that setting. Obviously that would tie up the USB port so it's not gonna work. So just have the beta flight configurator closed. So you can see I plugged in here my flight controller, but my receiver on this specific quad is not powering up. So what I'm gonna to need to do is use a LiPo as well to power up my receiver. Plug in my quad, and then you should see your, your transmitter or your receiver start to, to light up or flash. Now I have flashed this already, so you might get different flashing looks on there, but that's what we wanna do. And I know I have props on everybody, but I don't even have the ESCs connected or anything, so don't worry about that. Of course, you are powering your receiver, your quad up if you're plugging in, so do make sure you have the antennas connected and all that kind of stuff, and props off or a smoke stopper if you are, you know, have it fully wired up to your flight controller. So now that everything is connected, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this upload, and that will go ahead and compile the code, and then it will push it up to flash it as well, so you can kind of see what's going on over here, and then you can see the flashing up here as well. At this point right here, if it says boot failed, and it can't, like it goes through multiple attempts to connect the bootloader. What you may need to do is hold down the bind button on here before you plug in your LiPo or plug it into the USB. I've done this already before, so I don't need to do that. But the first time I did do it, you do have to hold down that bind button, then plug it in. Basically, you have to hold down the bind button to power the receiver, and then, then it will work for the first time. But after you do it the first time, you don't have to do that anymore. 
you should get down. It should go through the process like it did here where it connected the UART. Like I said, if you get multiple up to 10 retries and it doesn't work right here, like I said, you might have to redo that with holding down the bind button. And then it should go through ultimately and connect and then go through the upload process here and ultimately get down to success. After you get to this spot, you can go ahead and close this and you can power cycle and plug everything and you should be in good shape. Now, when you do plug this in, what you should be looking for without your transmitter turned on, you should have this slow flashing red and you can see it's pretty slow, but it will flash for three seconds on and then three seconds off and three seconds on and so on and so forth. And of course, when I power up my transmitter, Welcome to OpenTX. Engines disarmed. Acro mode. Logging on. And I go back to here, which you will see once it uh, connects everything up. And it should be bound right away because the bind code that you had when you compiled the firmware was the same. So I'm assuming you're coming from the last video where you flashed your transmitter. Now we're flashing receiver. That bind code that's hard, hard coded in there is going to be the same. So there's no binding. It just as you flash receivers, they automatically are bound. Once it's bound, you're going to get the red and the green light on together. Now, there's one thing I struggle with this, and I actually had a faulty receiver. I was going ahead and powering this up, and I didn't have my transmitter turned on at all. And I was just getting these two lights on right away. And what the issue is in that scenario is this bind button is actually stuck, and it's always in bind mode. And when I flashed Express LRS to it, that was kind of a sticking point for it. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, they may have resolved this issue altogether already. But if you do have that scenario where when you do a power cycle, and again, both of these lights are on, but your transmitter is not turned on, that means it's in bootloader mode all the time. It's kind of stuck because that bind button's held down. So it's always in bootloader mode. If you do find yourself in that scenario, they have a special bootloader flash file that you can flash uh, instead of the one that we downloaded there. And it might already be in the wiki there as well or it might just be the primary one to download. So just be aware of that issue. If you do have it, reach out for help on the Express LRS Discord. The guys are really helpful. There's a lot of people and they will respond pretty much right away. And I'll drop again that link to the Discord down below and just, just reach out for help if you're having any issues along the way. So now with that all done, we can plug back into Betaflight, go into our receivers tab, and you can see right here as I start moving around my transmitters sticks, uh, we have all is in order there. So you're gonna have eight channels to work with. You have your four for control and then four additional aux switches here. So we're gonna have our RSSI and link quality down here for displaying in the OSD. You can use those channels as well. So with that, we are done and you are set up to go. You know, as of this point, you can go ahead and tuck your receiver in. You're not gonna to need to hit the bind button anymore for flashing a new firmwares. As there's new releases or updates and stuff, as for right now, you just go to ST code, plug it into your flight controller, Go ahead and push the firmware update through the flight controller. You don't have to hit any buttons, so you can kind of tuck that receiver in and put it to bed. I did want to mention that there is a new Lewis script. So again, in the last video, I mentioned how you can go download that and get that set up. I'll make a card in the upper right, uh, taking you directly to that section or put a link down in the video description. But here's the new Lewis script. There's this number up here as well that shows zero out of 200. So there's zero packet loss out of 200 that are going from the radio to the module. Uh, they did fix up this telemetry ratio, so now you can actually click on this and it's not so sticky, so you can see all the different telemetry ratios there. We have our power frequency here, just as always before. And of course, down here we have our RF frequency, which is not adjustable. That was selected when we built the code. Okay, well that is it. Hopefully that was helpful. Now we are fully on Express LRS. I know I'm excited to take a look at it. I've really seen some compelling logs on how this really smooths out how the R9 system works for stick inputs, which helps a lot with feed forward and just a more consistent feel. I am gonna be taking this and putting it through its paces. Some of those video content will be out on the public channel, but I do do additional content for my patrons. So if you're interested in the deeper dives on that for kind of picking things apart in logging and just some additional content, please do check out my Patreon. As always, thanks for your time and I hope this helped. And like smash that like button, please. Cause then I, if, if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better?